A view from heaven. I, Daniel received this vision on February 6, 2004 just after seeing Satan's war council. The angel spoke to me and said, Come up to heaven with me, I want to show you what the world looks like to the Savior, from the throne room of God. As we ascended upward we went through a layer of heaviness, it was spiritual in nature, a terrible oppression. I couldn't see up or down, it was so dark. But we were ascending on a beam of light. I asked the angel what the darkness was, and why I was feeling so oppressed and heavy. This is the realm between heaven and earth. This is where Satan and his angels have their domain. They will have this until the last day when God will cast them into the abyss. The angel told me that this was the same place where Michael fought the prince of Persia who was holding up the messenger with the answers to Daniel's prayers. Then I asked the angel what the beam of light was that we were traveling in. He said, it is the prayers of the saints. The prayers of those who are interceding and fighting spiritual warfare. As we arrived in heaven, the brightness was more glorious than the human language has words to describe. My natural eyes could not see the light, it was as if I was seeing it in a mirror. The angel then turned me and said, Behold the planet Earth. All I saw was darkness with little beams of light popping up all over the world. These little lights were so powerful that they cut right through the darkness of Satan's realm. I asked the angel what the points of light were. Once again he said to me, These are the prayers of the saints. The lights were not constant, they turned off and on repeatedly. I asked the angel why they blinked off and on. He said, every time a light goes off, it is because someone is arguing or gossiping, etc., within a particular church causes it to lose its effectiveness in prayer. I said, but all the churches are praying, why aren't there more lights? Yes, he said, but with the condition of sin within the body of Christ, Satan has the right to block many of the prayers. The connection is never made to heaven. I said, is there anything we can do to change this? As I said earlier, the angels are standing by to do warfare, but the church has not yet found its authority to deal in spiritual warfare in the way God has called her to do. This is because of the fighting, competition, gossip, slander, false prophets, false teachers, and sins of the people. The churches are teaching the doctrines of man, not the doctrines of God. The angel turned to me and looked me straight in the eyes and said, you have read the word of God, do you not see how the church deviates from what is written in God's word? They fight over homosexuality, abortion, marriage, politics, money, and even over what color carpet to put in their sanctuaries. I said, what can I do to change the church? He said, come, let's go. I will show you the church. Once again, on a beam of light we descended down to earth over the USA. It looked like I could see every church in America all at once, both great and small and in between. I saw around each one of the churches the evil spirits that had been assigned to them by Satan. I said, if the church rebukes them, will they leave? It is written that man must repent and turn from his and her wicked ways, only then will God once again heal the land. 2 Cron. 714 The amount of power any church has in spiritual warfare is directly related to the condition of the lives of the people within it. As the angel waved his arm across the planet, he said, See man has built temples unto their flesh. Man says God will come and dwell in these buildings, they have not understood that God no longer dwells in a building but in the hearts of men. Most of these buildings are full of the flesh but empty of the Holy Spirit. They were built for the comfort and pleasure of the flesh of men, not for God. Man has become the authority in the churches, not God. God's churches are nearly all run by boards and political decisions. When God does pour his spirit out on some places, but quickly, man starts taking the glory. When the spirit leaves these places, the pastors and prophets do not even realize it. They continue on ministering in the flesh with signs and wonders from the flesh, not from God. Look, some are even putting on programs of healing instead of taking healing to the streets and hospitals like Jesus did. Some won't even touch those in wheelchairs because they know they don't have the power to heal them. Then he said again, let us look at the church. They have prophets who prophesy for pay. The people have to have their prophetic fix. They run to and fro searching for a prophet to give them a word. Eventually, they get so confused by the many words they receive, they walk away from seeking God and seek only the prophets. It becomes almost like an addiction. They have to have a word from a prophet frequently or they cannot be happy. I said, is not the gift of prophecy real? He said, yes. 
It is the true prophets of old set the example by prophesying correction and destruction through God's judgment, calling the people to repentance. Most of the prophets today prophesy peace and good times. We will see which one will come to pass. Jeremiah 28, 7 9 Nevertheless, hear you now this word that I speak in your ears, and in the ears of all the people. Eight the prophets that have been before me and before you of old prophesied both against many countries, and against great kingdoms, of war, and of evil, and of pestilence. 9 The prophet which prophecies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known, that the Lord has truly sent him. Soberly he continued, Today the majority of the prophets prophesy how wealthy people are going to be, they prophesy only fame and wealth and good times and blessing, never any of the hardships and suffering and the realities of life. They prophesy that everyone will have a great ministry, a mega ministry, they despise small ministries. The prophets today never see sin in anyone's life, so they never tell anyone to repent. Some of the prophets prophesied incorrectly that Y2K was going to be a disaster, yet completely missed the 11th of September 02. The prophets have been prophesying for over 40 years now that the rapture is coming within just a few days. I asked the angel, what do you mean? He said, there was a prophet in Arizona who prophesied that the end was coming on a specific day, so many sold their property and moved there. Then there were the prophets prophesying the Lord's coming on Rosh Hashanah, 1988. Many more fell into the trap of believing them. When he was here on earth, Jesus made it very clear that no man would know the day of his return. Today, no one is considering that God could delay his return for many years. The Christians have not built for the future, only for the present. The prophet Joseph prophesied the seven-year drought, and people prepared. In 2004 Julie Rowe of Arizona prophesied impending doom and inspired thousands of people to sell their possessions and prepare for disaster. Edgar C. Wissonant predicted in his book 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Could Be in 1988 that the rapture of the Christian Church would occur between September 11 and 13, 1988. After his September predictions failed to come true, Wissonant revised his prediction date to October 3. I asked him if more disaster was coming to America. He said, yes, I will show you, but you cannot write about it yet. I said, then what am I supposed to do? He said, look and listen. Most pastors today just want to build a name and a kingdom for themselves. They want to be on TV. They want to have radio stations. Books upon books are being written on how great life is. Books that make people feel good. Few are teaching God's people the truth. The pastors are not teaching God's people how to discern between good and evil. The church is not taking a stand against sin, instead they are compromising. Most of the churches are not even teaching their people how to fight spiritual warfare. Ezekiel 13, 5 You have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. I said, but the people are praising and worshipping God. He said, God's not even listening to them. He doesn't want to hear their praises when they are only edifying the flesh. Amos 5 21-24 I hate. I despise your feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your fattened peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. But let justice run down like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. He continued, the church wants to put on programs of entertainment, not teaching. Even the pastors and prophets are becoming showmen and actors. Once again the angel turned to look at me with a very sober expression. Even the ministers name their ministries after themselves, not for God. It becomes man's ministry, not God's. The church doesn't care about the lost or the hurting. I have been to many churches, visiting them as disguised as a physical person, as someone in need, and was turned away. Jesus himself has visited many churches, in the physical, in disguise as someone in need, and was turned away. I know of an angel sent by God to visit churches posing as someone wealthy. He was always welcomed with open arms, only for his money. During the 60s and 70s God sent a revival to the youth called the, Jesus Movement. It was rejected by the mainline churches. Still looking at me with this solemn and sorrowful expression on his face, he said, do you not know that the pastors, God's called leaders, do not run the churches today?
The church board does. Some denominations put out lesson plans so that the pastors are all preaching the same thing on any given Sunday instead of following the Holy Spirit and his call to that particular area. In many places, the demons laugh when the Christians declare that they have torn strongholds down, completely overlooking the continued presence of bars, prostitutes, abortion clinics, and drug pushers and users. He swept his arm over the whole U.S. in one gesture, saying, Look at the pastors who are sexually sinning against their wives. Look at the elders, deacons, and board members who are actively in adultery and stealing from the church offerings, and participating in many other sins. Yet they call themselves leaders. As he swept his arm over the U.S., I got to see the fast rising homosexual movement in America. He said, Look, this is what the church is compromising with. Now they are even claiming to ordain so called Christian pastors who are homosexual. They completely ignore God's word that proclaims homosexuality as an abomination to God. I got to see the innocent blood crying out from the abortions and ascending to the throne room of God from the lost babies aborted here on earth. In some cases, I even saw it come from people within the churches. I also saw the incredible rise in crime and violence, especially among the youth and children. Isaiah 3 12 As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O、oh、my people, they which led you cause you to err, and destroy the way of your paths. Then I saw Christ overlooking the whole earth, standing with his arms outstretched. His hands were still dripping with blood. The blood of redemption, the blood of salvation. But it was being turned back by the flesh, by unrepentant people deep in sin, deep in hatred and bitterness. Many of these were within the church. I heard Jesus say, Revival will come when man learns to repent. Jesus was also saying, Father, hold thy wrath, hold thy wrath, for just a little while longer. I did not get to see the look on Jesus' face, but I could tell by what the angel was doing that it was sad. That he was weeping over this planet that he had died for, looking down at the putrid sin that man was committing on this earth. I remember the angel saying, The abominations spoken of in the book of Daniel are about to be completed in America. They are killing children and legalizing homosexuality. He said that when both are fully legalized by the Congress of America through laws passed, that then the judgment of God will descend upon first the church and then America. 1 Peter 4 17 For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? The angel also told me something astonishing. He said, One of the greatest stumbling blocks within the church is the complete lack of fear of God and the teaching of a cheap grace. Few there are who have any fear of the loss of their salvation through continued willful sin. They believe they can continuously live in premeditated sin and still be forgiven and go to heaven. They have no fear of God's chastisement on their lives. Indeed, when trouble comes into their life, not once do they ever think about the fact that it may be the result of their own actions. Jeremiah 5 25 Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withheld good things from you. The angel showed me how, over the next few months, entertainment would completely become the parents to children. Everything will be acceptable, even pornography. He told me that there is a huge epidemic of pornography addiction within the church, even amongst the top leadership. As the angel brought me back home, he said, The prayers of the people 100 years ago were far greater than the prayers of the people today. People back then were willing to spend large amounts of time seeking out God. Even the outlaws of that day believed there was a God. The very foundation of our education here in America was based on the Bible. Children were taught from the Bible to read and write. The very protection of the children in any given school resulted from the saying of the Lord's Prayer daily. The very judicial system of America is based on the Bible. All of that has been removed from the schools and is fast being removed from the courts by activist judges. Most of the prayers of God's people today are completely self centered. And most people are unable to concentrate in prayer for more than a few seconds at a time. This is because they have been raised in front of the fast action and constantly shifting scenes on their TV and movie screens. This inability to concentrate is a huge hindrance in their relationship with God. I asked the angel about the coming disaster in America. Once again, we stopped and he said, America has not seen the destruction that God has chosen for her. The people cannot imagine what the wrath of God is really like. How his anger against their sin is so fierce. In fact, 
God cannot even look at the planet Earth, because if he did so, he would have to pour out his judgment and wrath now. Jesus is standing and interceding for the planet. Jesus is the one looking at all that is happening. I said, is judgment coming? He said, it is written. I said, will the wrath be terrible? He said, Sodom and Gomorrah were mild compared to what is coming. Once again I said, how can it be changed? How can we prevent this disaster from happening? Then I heard a voice from heaven. I knew it was God's voice. He thundered, if my people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. If they will stop seeking entertainment and start seeking me, if they will turn off their programs and turn to me, and invite me in, if they will bring correct teaching back to the people, if they will start listening to my voice, then I would not pour my wrath out. That's when I knew God was listening to every conversation I had been having with the angel. That's how God hears every conversation that goes on here on earth. What's coming out of your mouth? The angel told me that it was God's command for us to write this vision in our newsletter. I said, why us? Why can't somebody else do it? He just shook his head and said, God says that you two, Daniel Yoder and his wife, Rebecca Brown, are already so unpopular that a little more won't make any difference. When God releases me, I will share more about what I saw. A view from heaven. I, Daniel received this vision on February 6th.